Hello, I'm Sebastian Marquet, Commercial Director of Crush to Seller here in the Willamette Valley, and I'm very uh, pleased to have with us today uh, Michael Sobey from Osler. Hello, Michael. Hello, good to be here. Yes, I hope you are doing well in Germany. Thank you very much for staying with us so late there. And uh, I would like you to first introduce yourself. My name is uh, Michael Sobi uh, from Germany. I work for Erbsler Geisenheim, the enology company, uh, which is uh, based in, in Geisenheim, uh, very, very close to the university. And uh, we work uh, very close uh, with the university together. My job there at the company is uh, application engineer. So I'm involved in the product development, uh, but I'm also involved in field trials uh, and uh, I give presentations on uh, technical details and application of the products. Uh, and uh, that's why we are speaking here. Great. So, Michael, we uh, together decided to talk about the Trenoline Rosé DF. Uh, what, what is the reason for the development of Trenoline Rosé DF? So, Trenoline Rosé DF is an enzyme, and I have a presentation prepared for you here. Um, Trenoline Rosé DF is a press enzyme for rosé wines. So let me open the, the presentation very quick. I guess you can see the presentation right now. Yes, perfectly. And perfect. Uh, let me skip this slide. Uh, Trenoline Rosé DF was uh, developed uh, basically to influence the color on rosé wines. We all know uh, the, uh, the extraction enzymes on red wines. Yeah? So basically what you do, uh, you, you macerate the grapes, you want to extract as much uh, enterzymes, as much color uh, polyphenols uh, as possible. So the development behind Trenolin Rosé was uh, quite the opposite. Yeah? So what we are trying to achieve here is to extract less color, to uh, extract less enterzyans for the typically French uh, light colored style of rosé wines. So like the Provence style and, and all the exactly. South France as well. So a little bit far away from the Côte du Rhône who is a little bit more darker with Syrah. So why does exactly. Canoline Rosé DF extract less color. So, uh, trenolin rosé um, is a pectinase, yeah, but is a is a very purified pectinase. So, uh, the the activities uh, which are extracting more color, more enterzyans uh, in pectinases. Uh, are uh, cellulase side activities and uh, trenolin rosé was purified for this purpose in order not to have those activities. Okay. So we can uh, see here on the slides, uh, you can see the, the grape skin, you can see the flesh, you can see the pips and uh, the, the enterzymes, they sit in the grape skin and uh, a lot of pectinases, uh, they uh, they macerate the grape skin uh, and they extract the color from the grape skin. So the purpose for the development of Trenolin Rosé was not to do that. Okay, that is very interesting. Um, I see Trenolin Rosé DF. What does the DF mean, stand for? DF is, uh, is very important. So uh, the DF uh, means Depsidase free, so that is a that is a German term, but uh, all our enzymes from Erbsler carry that DF. So uh, translated in, into English, uh, it means cinnamyl esterase free. Yeah. So uh, uh, cinnamyl esterase free means uh, a cinnamyl esterase is an enzyme cleaving activity. So it. Uh, it naturally occurs in, uh, in enzymes, 
but uh, it uh, it will promote the the formation of volatile phenols. Yeah, we know those volatile phenols from uh, from bread. Uh, they not wanted in uh, in wines, of course, uh, and that's why all Erbsle enzymes are DF depsidase free, cinnamyl esterase free. Okay. So another question is uh, when I use trenoline rosé, do I need uh, another enzyme for settling or flotation or do I need something else in addition to trenoline rosé? No, you don't. You don't need another enzyme. Yeah. So uh, trenoline rosé is a pectinase. Uh, as I said before, it's a very purified pectinase. But at the same time, it's a very concentrated pectinase as well. So it will it will do the job. Uh, it will uh, it will cleave uh, the pectine molecule, so it will break it down. And after adding trenoline rosé, uh, you don't need another enzyme uh, for uh, cold settling or filtration or whatever whatever you want to do with a, with a juice. Oh, interesting. So it's one 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 use of it, and then you clear and and clean and, and clarify exactly. your wine at the same time. Exactly. Okay, so can Trenoline Rosé DF be used on Blanc de Noir or Blanc de Gris for sparkling production? Yes, yes. Uh, good question. And I prepared the next slide for uh, this and you can see you can see the nice picture and you can see the graph. Uh, of course, uh, uh, we're at Erbsle, we had to come up with a name. Yeah? And uh, it is Trenoline Rosé, and because of the French Rosé style, which is very light nowadays, so uh, we had to come up with a catchy name. So that is Rosé. But at the same time, uh, it will reduce color in Blanc de Noirs, uh, in, uh, in Blanc de Gris. Uh, uh, especially uh, uh, in Germany, we had a couple of uh, very hot vintages, so the the 2018, 2019, they were really, really hot and a lot of winemakers had problems with, uh, uh, with uh, Pinot Gris, yeah? having that, uh, that, uh, that pink tone in, in Pinot Gris. So uh, we have a lot of success uh, with uh, Pinot Gris as well. So this slide uh, shows, you, shows you a trial from France. Uh, this is Grenache. Yeah? So uh, on the right side of the diagram, you see the IC, which is the, uh, the, color, uh, the color index, uh, which, uh, which means is the color sum. Yeah? And you see the difference between the control and the, the, the treated wine, so that it has much, much less color. So uh, on each wavelength, so uh, 420 for the for the yellow, uh, 520 for the red, and 620 for the blue uh, wavelength. Yeah. So I think this is a this is quite a good example, and uh, the winery was very pleased uh, with uh, with that result. So when when do you use uh, Trenoline Rosé? You use it immediately when you after press? No. Now you have to use it. Uh, you have to use it before the press uh, because it's a press enzyme. So you have to use it very, very early on. Yeah, as soon as the as the as the berries get crushed, uh, you have to use trenoline rosé. So at the crusher, you add it at the at, crusher. At the crusher. Yeah. Um, can I substitute activated carbon and PVPP when I use uh, uh, trenoline rosé DF? Yes, uh, yes, because uh, that was part of the development. Uh, we were trying to, to get rid of that, uh, of that uh, basically uh, application step. Uh, uh, we use uh, activated carbon uh, very, very much in Germany because of our protitis uh, issues yeah? and uh, for, for fixing color in, uh, in rosé wines. And for me, it was very important to, to, get, uh, to get rid of something which is so uh, unspecific, uh, like activated carbon. Because uh, with the rosé grapes, uh, with the red wine grapes, there's nothing wrong. There is mostly nobotritis, and you only use the, the activated carbon for, for fixing the color. Mm -hmm. same, uh, same with the PVPP. So, 
uh, with uh, with this uh, with this tool in our hands now, it's it's much more elegant to to extract less color from the grapes uh, and to have the the color the the winemaker uh, wants to achieve in his rosé wine. And plus, you keep more aromatics because he does not strip the wine as much. Yes, yes, yes exactly. Yeah, uh, because uh, that is the that is the downside. Uh, either of, uh, of PVPP and of activated carbon as well. Yeah? So uh, the whole development was aiming uh, to, uh, to have less color, but to, to keep the aromatics uh, in the wine, to keep the precursors. Does it is, uh, reduce the, the yellow shade or unwanted, unwanted uh, yellow shade? Uh, that's a that's a good question. Uh, sometimes it does, uh, sometimes it don't. Yeah, that that depends on the that depends on the on the wine matrix. Uh, on this slide, uh, this is uh, this is Syrah Most uh, from the from southern France as well, and you can see here the yellow shade, which means the the wavelength at four hundred twenty uh, nanometers, is slightly reduced. But this uh, doesn't happen in all trials. Yeah. So the the major the major aim uh, for Trenolin Rosé is to reduce the total color. So the the color index on the on the right hand side of the diagram, and we see here this is 28 percent, uh, and you see the picture. Uh, it's uh, it's pretty impressive. Yeah. So. That uh, that winery had to use a lot of PVPP and a lot of uh, activated carbon to to get to this result. So, so it reduced the polyphenol in general, and uh, that is pretty impressive for rosé production. Yes, yes. Um, so we talk about aromatic, but do, are the aroma precursor affected uh, or not? Uh, let me jump uh, to uh, to this slide. Yeah. So um, uh, in the uh, in the development, of course, we are uh, uh, we did a lot of research, a lot of tasting, a lot of uh, uh, trying to to understand rosé styles uh, all over the planet. And we came up with uh, like three major rosé styles. So it's a millic, yeah, where you have uh, isomyl acetate uh, as a as a main as a main substance, as a very fresh substance in your rosé wines. So you have thiols esters, yeah, uh, which can come from uh, thiols can come from uh, red grapes as well. Uh, esters to to give you to give you the fruit and to give you the the long lasting fruit. And the third one was the rosé styles of like red fruit, so uh, mainly a rosé style, uh, which uh, which reminds you more of a of a red wine. So uh, the rosés with uh, uh, treated with Trenolin rosé, so they aim more in the in the first two directions, depending on what you use and what kind of yeast you use for the fermentation later on. So. Uh, rosés uh, treated with trenolin rosé, so they have less color. And basically, if you uh, would have it in a nutshell, uh, more of a white wine character, yeah, more of that fruit-driven uh, rosé style with uh, with a very punchy fruit, with a very loud fruit. Oh, man, it's fabulous. Uh, it seems to be uh, very efficient. Do you have anything else, Michael, to talk about your Trenolin Rosé that I did not ask you the question? Okay, let me let me check in my presentation. So that is the the customer benefit. So that that basically sums it up pretty uh, pretty good. So uh, the performance. Uh, so. The winemaker uh, can skip activated carbon PVPP in order to to adjust color. Uh, it's uh, it's the time saving as well. So uh, Trenolin Rosé is not just there to reduce the color, but uh, also uh, is acting as a normal pectinase uh, and of course the purity we were talking about. And uh, give me a second, uh, Sebastian. Um, I have a slide here, and this is uh, 
this is a, a rosé concept for Europe. Uh, and unfortunately, uh, pea proteins are not uh, available in the US. Uh, but uh, what we propose here is a trenoline rosé concept uh, uh, to have the enzyme, um, to have a, a fining agent and to have a, uh, to have a, a suitable yeast which will uh, promote uh, will promote that uh, that fruit uh, which is desired. Yeah. So. Okay. Do you think the pito protein will become available in US sometime soon or, or not? No, no. I, I I hope so. That is a that is a that is a major point. And uh, uh, in uh, in Europe, uh, it's not just uh, organic wine estates or smaller wine estates. The the big uh, the big sellers uh, are using pea or potato protein because uh, they want to sell uh, wines and uh, uh, from the from the market or from the from the customers it's a requirement to have that wine uh, vegan so uh, I think uh, the U.S. and Canada uh, should uh, should fight for uh, for uh, vegan finding agents yes. Yeah? So, uh, it's, oh great! Uh, Let's see what you know if they, they approve it or not. We'll see. Anyway, Michael, another question is: How do you say Osler, Erslow? I hear everything <laughs> at the at the store here in Newburg, and I would like to know exactly how we need to pronounce it. Sebastian, you're doing pretty good, but it's uh, it's because of the umlaut, uh, uh, and it's uh, pronounced Erslow. Erslow. Okay. Erslow. Yeah, pretty pretty good. Okay, thank you, Michael. So the product, Erbslur product line is available at Crush to Seller. You can go on our website, crushtoseller.com and you will be able to purchase online You come to the store and we are shipping all in the US. So anyone interested, just contact us. Michael, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah. Thanks for having me. Yeah, it was wonderful to, uh, to do this webinar with you. Thank you, I appreciate it. Take care, Sebastian. Thank you.